Good day everyone and we're continuing uh, the videos on Song of Songs and we're looking at the second part, the second video on uh, chapter 1 verse 6 and it reads, Don't stare at me because I'm dark. The sun has darkened my skin. My brothers were very angry with me and they forced me to care for their vineyards so I couldn't care for myself, my own vineyard. My mother's sons were angry with me. The mother's sons were, seems to be the ones who was, went before her, who forced her. And in this sense, we know that Israel was brought into two covenants. And the first covenant was the one made with Moses at Mount Horeb. And it, it entailed the giving of the law, the Torah. And in Jeremiah, later, God promised a new covenant. A covenant of grace that was promised, promised to the nation of Israel and to Judah. And it was ratified by Jesus on the cross. And, and we've considered this before. But Paul elaborated on this whole theme because the first covenant, it was a severe covenant. It was about keeping laws, being strict, looking after things, looking after it in a sense like the older brothers forcing her to work in their vineyards, doing things their way. And in other words, she, whether it was the law per se, or whether it was the rules and regulations and principles they've laid down for her, she had to adhere to what they had laid down for her. And Paul spoke about that in Galatians 4. He said, Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. And these two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai where the people received the law and that was enslaved by them. Now Jerusalem is like, just like Mount Sinai in Arabia. And that is the literal Jerusalem in Israel as we know it today. Because she and her children live in slavery to the law. But the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman and she is our mother. As Isaiah said, Rejoice, O childless woman, you who have never given birth. Break into a shout, shoutful joy, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are the children of promise, just like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want to keep the law, just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. But what do the scriptures say about that? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman will not share in the inheritance of the free woman's son. And in Hebrews we read concerning these two covenants. By speaking of a new covenant, God has made the first one old. Anything that becomes old and worn out will soon disappear. So the one is a covenant of works and the other one is a, and performance and the law. And the, and, and, the, and the next one was the covenant of grace and of love and of relationship. Now, just for interest sake, the topic of hyper or super grace is very much at hand. And the issue is that of salvation. How far does grace extend? But it is by grace that we are saved through faith, and it is the gift of God. It's free. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. The letter to the Galatians was mainly written to stop believers from mixing law and grace. And admittedly, we have some isolated scriptures warning us not to take that grace for granted, or to use it as a license to sin or sin more. But we are overwhelmingly taught that grace is God's free gift, His enablement, that we can only receive by faith. How does it tie in with the scripture here? It is that she needs to, to, to embellish and love and express that grace, the Shulamite, because she is the one that fulfills wisdom. She is the one that is the second covenant. And in other words, we've got to walk in the fullness of that grace. And it is, in a sense, a beautiful grace. And we need to acknowledge that and live out of that beautiful grace. We serve God out of love, driven by faith, and a faith that says that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. As the children of God, all of heaven's blessings are ours, and it is the Father's good pleasure to give us His kingdom. When we ardently choose to serve Him in righteousness and in loving obedience, 
we, 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 as fueled by a sincere devotion. In other words, she needs to go to her, her, her own vineyard. And she recognizes that. And she must go now and leave the vineyards of the brothers and see God for herself and serve Him in righteousness and that loving obedience and, and, and employ and use and enjoy the fullness of all heaven's blessings in her life. Don't let your brothers force you to toil in their vineyards, even though it makes make them angry. Believe me, it'll upset them. <laughs> Those who are workers and who are performance oriented do not like the people of Christ. So let the love of Jesus constrain you through Holy Spirit's indwelling presence and only do the good works He has prepared for you. Faithfully tend the vineyard He has assigned to you first and then enable others to do the same. Let us pray. Almighty Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I thank you for my salvation and life of love and thankfulness in you. In Jesus' name, Amen.